Hello, my name is Howard Cook. I'm one of the owners and the founder of Bay Area Retrofit 25 years ago. And I'm going to be speaking to you about soft story retrofits. A soft story occurs when there is a living area above a garage. The big concern is that the garage door opening will collapse and the living area will collapse along with it. This is a very serious structural weakness. The city of San Francisco and Oakland both now require that uh, buildings with five units or more and a soft story be retrofitted by law. It uh, is expected or possibly could happen that then it will expand to fourplexes, triplexes, duplexes. So it's pretty important and they're very worried about the geologic hazard. As you may have looked at elsewhere on the website or I may have sent you a link, the geology is a real serious concern. Uh, it could happen any minute. It's going to be huge. A lot of buildings are going to be lost and hopefully your home will not be one of them. This video is also a sample proposal. So you will actually, I'll show you, this is really what one of your proposals will look like if you have us look at your house. So there will be a sample building that I analyze, show you uh, a little bit how the design would work. Uh, as well as some other things. So anyway, let's go ahead and see what a soft story retrofit consists of. Here you're going to see an experiment that was done by a large hardware manufacturing company on a gigantic shake table. You have uh, two houses, they're identical. They have soft story conditions, great big openings at the front. And you'll see that the one on the left that had been retrofitted had very little damage. And the one on the right had catastrophic damage. But also I want you to notice, even though the floor was torn out, the entire, the building, the, the, the roof and the walls, and the second story floor all remained intact and the building stayed in pretty good shape because uh, rectangles are strong, strong geometric shapes. So if you can just keep your house on the rectangle, on the, on the foundation, you should be in pretty good shape. A similar experiment was done at UC San Diego and in this case they took a building and they had it retrofitted and it did quite well in an earthquake. They put in uh, different types of hardware. They put in, you know, they nailed shear walls and, you know, they connected the front where the garage door openings are to the foundation. Now they took all those components out and put it as if it were an unretrofitted house and they shook it and you'll see right here what happened. Please notice that on either side of the garage door opening, those narrow walls did collapse, and that's what the big concern is for every house with a soft story condition. So as you can see, as it starts to shake, on either side of those garage door openings, the narrow walls collapse, and when they collapse, a whole building goes with it. That's what we want to avoid, and a retrofit will take care of that. So let's see what happened here as the roof of the garage rocked back and forth like that. This narrow wall and this narrow wall both fell over like posts. You can imagine what would have happened here if there were a house up above. Here you have the exact same things. The red arrows point at narrow walls that used to support the house. As the earthquake force rocked back and forth like this, these walls tipped over like posts. Here's a typical split level home. You see a lot of these in Albany, Berkeley, El Cerrito, and actually any older neighborhood in the Bay Area. So this is how these are built. We have the garage right here, and then there's usually a bedroom here, maybe two bedrooms uh, front and back. And then this is the main house. So normally you walk into the front door here, and then you go up some stairs up here. And these are actually have two separate floors. So you have a floor here, that's your main floor. And then uh, you have this other floor and each one needs to be attached to the foundation. So this lower floor is pretty easy to do. This takes a, usually a standard cripple wall retrofit. If you want to know what those are, they're discussed on the website. Uh, but this here takes a soft story retrofit. And uh, we, what we need to do is we just need to make sure that we can attach this, uh, the floor, the front of the floor right here 
to some foundation and that's normally done with a steel column um, which you will learn about shortly and then the steel column it goes behind here where you can't see it so that's called a moment column now if we don't do that this is what can happen here this was the original main floor so this right here is the same as that and then we have the garage uh, the, you know the the living area above the garage with this is equivalent to that and there used to be a garage underneath here but the wall on this side collapsed and the wall on this side collapsed and it pulled away from the you know from the rest of the house so that's what the big problem is with these split level homes and if you have one uh, you might want to think about retrofitting it now if you can't afford it and they're kind of expensive if you retrofit this part uh, and you do a good job because it is attached to the soft story section through the nails and through the siding and whatever connections there happen to be um, you know you'll you'll be better but certainly not what you need to now be. I'd like to go over the practical side of a soft story retrofit the first thing we do in a soft story retrofit is dig a trench and fill it full of concrete and steel this starts by cutting a notch in the concrete slab so here, for example, this is a concrete saw. This is a diamond blade. And first we cut, there's a notch right here. We cut this way. Then we come over here and we cut another one this way. And then we break out the concrete here. After that, we can dig the trench this way. We take out all the dirt and then we put in concrete and steel. And then we attach that to a steel column, which you will learn about in a second. So you can see here, this is the garage floor right here, the garage floor right here, and this is where we cut out the concrete and dug the trench. The trench is probably two feet wide, two feet deep, and we filled it full of steel. And this steel goes here and it connects to the bottom of a steel column. So once we fill this concrete, the bottom of the steel column will be attached to all this concrete and steel, which keeps it secure at its base. This photograph illustrates the same thing. Here is the trench. Here is the steel rebar. It's connected to the base of the column right here. Once we fill this with concrete, the base of our column will be securely attached to a massive amount of concrete. When we dig the trench, it is not uncommon for us to find water lines or sewer lines such as you see here. In these cases, you must wrap the pipe with a certain type of wrap to insulate it from the concrete, otherwise it will corrode and leak. Finally, once everything's done, we fill the ditch with concrete. So let's see what this is now. Here's our steel column. The rebar is inside the concrete. It goes here and it connects to the steel column. And this is a massive amount of concrete. And please notice that you can still drive over it. The concrete here is on the same plane as the concrete here and the concrete here, so it'll be completely flat so you can drive over it. The way this works is when the earthquake force pushes on the top of this column, that force goes down into this massive amount of concrete and keeps it stable. So this is the top of the column where it connects to the floor. Let's look at how it works. This is the top of the column. It is bolted to this piece of steel right here with this bolt right here. Then this assembly is bolted to this piece of steel right here and this piece of steel right here. And then this piece of steel is bolted to the floor joist, which is what your floor is nailed to with these bolts right here. So the way it works is when the earthquake force pushes this way, or as shown in this red arrow, it goes like this that force is transferred to the joist that it is bolted to. So that's the joist right here. And then this is the floor that's nailed to the top of it. So when the earthquake force pulls on this piece of steel right here, that force gets transferred to this assembly right here. It in turn is bolted to the steel column, which is right here. And then when that steel column tries to move, that force gets transferred into the foundation and the steel that is at its base, which stabilizes the floor. So this is our completed soft story retrofit. Right up here is where the floor connection is that we just looked at. Here's the steel column. Here you can see the concrete that's in the floor. So the way this works is earthquake forces go back and forth like that. It 
they push on the steel column. When they do that, that force gets transferred down into the concrete. Or if they pull on the steel column, exact same thing. Pulls on the column, that goes into the top. This is very, very stiff and rigid. And then that transfers into the concrete and stabilizes the floor. So this is our last example to show how soft story retrofits work. This is a typical San Francisco house. And the first thing that alerts us is that this is a soft story home is this garage door opening. That's one of the first things that we notice. Now on either side, we have a narrow wall right here and a narrow wall right here. And as discussed before, those narrow walls can collapse just like posts. So, but there's another problem here. There's the floor is located here, but we also have floor that is located here that you step up into when you are on the landing. So you come up here to the porch, then you step up into the main floor. Now the thing that uh, you should know about that is the main floor, which is what we want to connect a foundation. If this section right here is only supported by posts. So if you go into your garage or your crawl space, and you look up and see what is supporting this wall, which is also supporting the main floor, you will just see two posts. You'll see a, a, a post, a beam, and another post supporting it. And naturally, a post cannot support the back, the back and forth motion of an earthquake. So houses like this are definitely in need of a soft story retrofit. So if you happen to have us uh, put a proposal together for you, this is what it would look like. Uh, soft story retrofits invariably have a shear wall portion and shear walls are discussed elsewhere on our website or if you just look up cripple wall retrofit they are discussed there so right in here this area we have a crawl space we have a cripple wall and so over here we have just standard you know cripple wall retrofit components these are shear walls along here shear wall here and shear walls over here and over here inside the garage. So that's one way of retrofitting at just a standard home. But in your case, we have a steel column, or in this particular case, here's our steel column right here, connects up to the floor and into the concrete work right you know, here. And then we have the um, and then we have the connection to the floor. And remember, this is as if you're in a helicopter looking down on the house and this is your foundation wall line. So your foundation runs all the way around on the outside here. So this is how you would retrofit a home with a soft story. Uh, sometimes you have soft stories that are, I guess, hidden. For example, in this case, we do have the garage door opening right here. We have the living area, but then we have this stairwell. And you can't quite tell what a serious situation this is until I describe it to you. So actually, underneath this doorway, you're just going to find one or two posts. That means underneath this part of the house, you might have one or two posts. Under this part of the house, you have this wall inside the garage and this wall inside the garage, and they can all collapse. So in this situation, you're as just as bad as you were in the previous one in that you have no lateral support along the front. So the way we do these is right underneath here, we'll put a shear wall. In other words, we take this floor right here and we attach it to the foundation. We dig a trench here in the garage, and we and we uh, you know put a foundation. We take a wall, what's called a shear wall. We attach it to here to keep it from uh, collapsing in an earthquake. Or we'll put a steel frame, uh, just like we looked at, uh, on either side of the garage. Either way will work. It, generally, the shear walls are stronger and 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 you know less expensive, but we can do either way. And we're going to look at that a little bit more in a second. So this is the same house, it's a, obviously a drawing, and we're looking down as if we're in a helicopter. And so you can see right here, we put in this new foundation to attach the floor to the foundation. So just like the house we were looking at in the photograph, there was a set of stairs that went up, then it went up to this porch, and the porch floor and the main floor are actually different floors. They're not even, they're just connected, but they're completely different floor levels. You can tell that when you walk up uh, into your front door, there's a, a step up, which lets you know that one floor is lower than the other one, meaning they're independent of each other. So the one choice here is we put in the foundation, put a shear wall on each side, and we've got a really, really strong uh, situation here. This is probably the best thing we can do. And if we can't do that for some reason, we'll go ahead and put the steel column in. 
So here's our foundation, here's our column. They could column go on this side, could have gone on that side, but those are the two options. And then generally we try to do this because it is cheaper and uh, more effective, frankly. Now I'd like to show you some of the damage that can occur to apartment buildings. Uh, it can be very serious. The city of San Francisco and Oakland now mandate that every building five units or more with a soft story be retrofitted. And so you can see by these photographs, if this happens on a large scale, which it will when the earthquake hits, the uh, housing stock in the Bay Area will be devastated. And that's why the cities are so concerned. Well, I hope it's clear uh, what a soft story retrofit looks like and how that would apply to your home. Please be aware this video uh, type of proposal is only done by me. The other owner, Jeff Bailey, only supplies a written proposal, but all the principles are exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to hear about future videos, please subscribe. You can also email me at info at Bay Area retrofit.com and ask me any question you like and I'll do my best.